Hi guys, today we're going to take a look at page 18 of the Unit 2 Classwork Packet. Now, we're going to be looking now at two additional reflections, but I'm sad to say that these two must be memorized. Let me say that again. Unlike with the other reflections we've studied thus far, the coordinate rules for these two must be memorized. So I'm going to write them out for you. For a reflection across the line y equals x, this is your coordinate rule, which I like to think of as switching. Like literally, it just switches the x and y. By contrast, and I'll do this in a different color, if you're reflecting across the line y equals negative x, you still switch, but you also change both of the signs. So I'll give you guys like three seconds to write that down. Three, two, one. I mean, you could always pause me, but whatever. Okay. Now, before I actually show the mechanics of how this works, because the mechanics are actually kind of easy, um, I, I do want to say I want a few words about what this actually looks like, okay? From Algebra 1, you guys should remember that y equals x is a line, right, with a slope of 1 and y-intercept of 0. So it kind of looks something like this. It's just a diagonal line going upward through the origin. Okay, now if I wanted to flip something over that line, for example, here's like a like a triangle, what it would end up looking like is something like, uh, not like that. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, it would look something like that, right? And notice it follows the same principles of reflections, where this and this are the same distance away from that line. The only difference is because the line is slanted, it's diagonal. Uh, we're gonna have a little bit of a harder time finding the coordinates than we would otherwise. The same goes for a reflection over y equals negative x. So y equals negative x from Algebra 1, we're, we're calling slope-intercept form. It has a slope of negative 1, right? m is negative 1, and because there's no b, it's just 0, right? The y-intercept is 0. So that line would look something like this. Sorry about that. And so if I were to try to reflect something over it, it would look something like this. So there's a triangle and there's a triangle. All right. They should be more, they should, well, not more or less. They should be the same size, the same distance away. Right. But that's, that's what it actually looks like. So if you get the image of this transformation, like what the heck did they do? That's most likely what happened. Now, that being said, let's take a look at how easy these actually are to perform, as long as we know our coordinate rule. And for that, let's take a look first at what, uh, example number nine, shall we? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first write out my coordinates before I even make a graph so you guys can see how easy this actually is. Uh, yikes, shame on me. Negative five, negative two negative three comma four, gotta check myself here, negative one comma one, all right. Okay, and they asked me to do a reflection over the line y equals x, let me write that down, y equals x, right? Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is write down my coordinate rule, and my coordinate rule for this is what I call the switch. Let me say that again. The coordinate rule for y equals x is the switch where literally all I gotta do is just switch the two coordinates. So guess what? Instead of being negative five, negative two, this would just be negative two, negative five. Instead of being negative three comma four, this would just be four comma negative three. And this one, instead of being negative one comma one, it would just be one comma negative one. So look at that. I, like, I'm done. I mean, I got my coordinates, right? Now, if you actually need to see this graph, you actually could, but, and I'll actually let you guys do that. You can pause me for a second if you wanna graph the original and graph the new so you can see how it looks like that, okay? But the bottom line is, as long as you guys know your coordinate rule, this is unbelievably easy, all right? Now, let's take a look at the slightly harder case. So we're gonna take a look at question number 11. Once again, we're going to take a look at question number 11, because this one, instead of reflecting it over y equals x, they're going to reflect it over y equals negative x. Let's see how that's going to work. All right. 
Alrighty, so I'm just gonna write down the coordinates if that's okay with you guys. Negative one, comma three, zero six and three five. All right, and two comma two. Okay, now in order to perform this particular reflection, I need to have my coordinate rule memorized. The coordinate rule for a reflection over y equals negative x. This is what I think of as the switch and negative. Let me say that again. Switch and negative. Let me say it a third time. Switch and, okay, yeah, negative. So as a coordinate rule, what that's going to mean is I'm using this formula right here. Negative y comma negative x. So all I'm doing is I'm switching the numbers, but I'm also changing their sign. Let me say that again. You might want to write this down. I'm switching the numbers, but I'm also changing their signs. So if it was positive, now it's negative. And if it was negative, now it's positive. So over here, this is going to become negative 3, comma 1. Notice how they switched places, but they also switched signs. Over here, this is going to become negative 6, comma 0. The reason is negative 0 is the same thing as 0. Over here, we're going to have negative 5, negative 3. And over here, this is pretty easy, we're going to have negative 2, negative 2. So guess what, people? That's it. In some ways, these are actually some of the easiest reflections to perform. The only thing that's tricky is if you don't memorize your rule, uh, I wouldn't want to be you on a test. Okay? Now, in terms of uh, the remaining examples here at the bottom of page 18, when they ask you to identify the line of reflection, it's super, super easy. All you got to do is look for the line that basically goes right down the middle. Okay? Let me say that again. You're looking for the line that goes right down the middle. So, for example, 13, it's super easy because what line goes right down the middle? Well, it's just the y axis. And the y-axis has an equation, x equals zero. Example 14. Do you notice how the line of reflection seems to go like diagonally this way? Hmm, which one do we just learn about? y equals negative x would be my line of reflection. For number 15, the line of reflection is actually kind of like on the left somewhere, isn't it? So what number is right in between that r and the r prime? Hmm, I don't know about you guys, but it looks kind of like a 3, right? So we'd say x equals 3 is the line of reflection, a vertical line that goes through 3. And for number 16, well, what do you guys see is right between the v prime and the v, I would say that looks kind of like the x-axis, right? It's just flipped over the x-axis. So in sum, the most important thing for you guys to do is memorize two coordinate rules. For y equals x, it's just y comma x. And for y equals negative x, it's negative y, negative x. Now there's a really, really useful graphic organizer for you under modules unit two. It's called, wait for it, unit two graphic organizer. That's kind of like the Bible for this chapter, right? Or whatever holy book you guys use, you know? Um, it's really useful because it has everything like it has all the coordinate rules for reflections rotations okay and when we talk about them like you know translations and everything else like that okay but i would strongly encourage that you guys start to study that because it must be committed to memory for the geometry eoc